welcome to Ruminations on Jet Space Magazine. I'm Lennon Bradshaw. And my name is Arson Nicky. And we are here to make it clear and talk about the last episode of All Stars 3. Oh my gosh, the final episode. Arson, <sighs> tell me, tell me all the details and what you think. I'm gonna tell you everything, London Bradshaw. Oh my goodness, so first of all, I have to apologize. <sighs> I know, she, she's been waiting for this all season. I was wrong about the BB Mole thing. I'm so sorry, I apologize. I confess I was not correct. But you have to admit, London, we did get a pretty great gag in the finale the jury? in place. Yeah, the jury. Oh my gosh, the jury twist was fantastic in my opinion it was a true completion of the entire cycle of the season in which the queens who were eliminated came back and placed their final judgments um, upon the finalists oh my goodness it was like karmic retribution but like in a dress it was absolutely fantastic in a dress are we talking about kennedy davenport's dress or are we like talking about like <laughs> ben de la Cram not saying All anything right. the whole entire jury ben didn't say one thing yeah, you uh, made a couple comments couple. london i want to know what you thought though um i thought it was really shady the whole entire episode like if oh. we could call it rupaul's shade race then like it would be that episode because there was like shade here, shade from the producers, shade there, shade from every other queen, shade. and then like the devilish look of Aja. I was like, okay, like what, oh, girl? Look, that was the yeah, shade. Yeah, we <laughs> see you're a different shade. <laughs> Face tune didn't help you this season. Definitely He's, different this season. <laughs> I was gonna say that was like a different look for her. Yeah, we um uh, we have a lot to talk about this. Um, so we're gonna try to jam pack it because. It is our last ruminations ever. But we've got some more exciting stuff in store yes, pretty yes, soon, yes. which we'll talk about in so, a bit. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's get started. Bam! All righty, party people. We're going to just hop out of the closet. Hello. Pew, pew. And talk about the best and the worst looks of this episode. There was a lot because all the queens were there, so <laughs> <That's true. laughs> we had a lot to choose from. Some of them you might have seen, some of them you might have not seen, but we're here to point some of the things out for you, starting with the worst and starting with Nikki Kama Arson. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, my least favorite look in this episode, which was an episode full of strong looks, was definitely BB Zahara Benet's runway look with yeah. the animal print, with the head. It was just, for me, it was a little too literal of an interpretation. And when you're in the very last episode, and I believe the category was best drag, best outfit, something to that extent, you want to show your best outfit in the episode regardless. Yep. Um, it just didn't stack up to the rest of her outfits and to the rest of the outfits that the contestants were wearing uh, on the episode and throughout the season. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, when it comes right down to it, we have to pick uh, someone who is the least best slash the worst. So sorry, BB, but that was my pick for this episode. <laughs> what about you, London? Um, she wasn't a contender anymore. Um, she's the least whiniest person on this episode, or sorry, season. She is the whiniest episode. Melt. Like, okay. Uh, she had her own carton today, um, literally. <laughs> um, I really <laughs> didn't understand because I thought she was dressed like a cow. Um, not talking about her size or anything, but she had the nipples out and everything. But she had like lip thing going on. And I think, like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It was creative. I liked it, but I just didn't piece together what was happening. Um, I did like, however, she was like touching her nipples when she was walking to the <laughs> lipsticks. That was a nice so touch. I thought those were udders, but then she had like the lip thing, like I said, going on, but there were some rhinestones here, string hanging out. So, I mean. Yeah, I'm I with just, you on that one. I don't know. So sorry about that, Melk, but I just didn't understand. Um, please, Nikki, comma, Arson, tell me your best look of this episode. You know, I'm gonna tell it to you right now, London Bradshaw. For me, it had to be Trixie Mattel. The moment she stepped onto the stage, I was completely floored. In an episode full of fantastic looks, hers stood out in part because it was a brilliant silhouette. The construction was gorgeous. The fabric was 
incredible but also it's kind of a different look for trixie mattel while still being in her wheelhouse of looks i wasn't completely taken aback like oh boy she tried something like way too out of the box uh but she pulled through with this in uh terms of a risk so props to you trixie because that was stunning London, I'm really curious as to what you thought was the best look of the episode. Well, call me crazy, Nancy, but I think that Shangela was giving me Ella Gonza fucking realness. Oh, so good. Um, we, if you don't know, you two watched together this time, and uh, we looked at each other and we were like, who's going to talk about this? Because we were just, it was just so amazing. Uh. It was just not... I don't know. And it had pockets. Did you, I don't know if you saw, but oh. did it have pockets? <laughs> I didn't like, notice, but that's awesome too. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, we are big fans of gowns and like avant-garde, things like that. So I definitely thought that it was very elegant. And then the hair just went with it and her makeup. It was just, and then the only thing I have to say is like, it had like a back slit. I didn't understand what's going on. It was okay. purple, but like you can't clock that because she came out like she was going to like a Cinderella ball on Disney Channel. Oh. So. It was like, it was very Oscars. Yes, yes. You know, Wakanda forever. We're here to talk about the tops and the bottoms of this episode. And that would be the performances of this episode, what we thought was the best and the worst. And we're gonna start with the worst. And I'm gonna start with comma, Arson, Nikki. Well, uh, I have to say that Bibi Zahara Benet's performance in the video uh, was my least favorite performance of the entire episode. And actually it wasn't just because of the fact that she missed that pretty important piece of kick choreography where she fell into the dancer's arms, but also when she was uh, running around doing her live clip uh, of just her solo, her focus kind of seemed a little bit off. She was seemed a little worried and distracted about stuff that was elsewhere instead of being right here to the camera. And I feel like that's really important when you get down to the wire. So unfortunately, BB, it comes down to that sort of little thing in the last episode, and that's what did it for me. So sorry, but you didn't you didn't make the mark for me on this episode performance wise. What about you? Uh, I definitely thought Kennedy Davenport's uh, lip sync for your life performance was not my favorite. Um, I am an acrobatic queen, uh, so I do actually feel for her in a way. I feel like she gave it her all, and she wanted to do the best she could and her strongest point for that. Um, to be in an all-star, but I feel like if you're doing too many acrobatics, you lose the lip sync, and the point of RuPaul's, I think, one of the main things is lip sync and getting it down, and she may have had it down, but um, she we lost that in the acrobatics and the performance, so yeah. it wasn't my favorite because I wanted to see the words coming out of her mouth, because I know how she dances, but I've never actually seen her lip sync, so that's the only thing that I was looking for, other than that. Um, you were talking about something on a different episode of RuPaul's. Yeah. On, Same thing. Well, I, if you remember on season two, uh, when Morgan McMichaels and Sonique lip synced, we had a similar sort of situation where Morgan's lip sync was super tight and Sonique was doing the flips and Morgan ended up staying because it was all about the lip sync. So if yeah. you're going off of that criteria, I'm with you on this one. Yeah, so same thing. So sorry, Kennedy, but I mean, you did a great job. Congrats being in the top two, but maybe I want to see more lip sync. Yeah. But let's talk about the best performances. You go first. My favorite performance, hands down, was Shangela in the music video challenge. She so looked like a star. She knew exactly what she was doing. She had all of her moves down. She did them with pizzazz. And uh, there were tons and tons of backup dancers that could have stolen the show from her. And she shined in every single way. And that is challenging to do, especially in the first take. So congratulations, Shangela. You really pulled it out. I was kind of disappointed that she wasn't in the top uh, two, but it wasn't my decision. Uh, but you did a really fantastic job, so yeah. props. Uh, London Bradshaw, which one was your favorite? That was actually our all-star winner, uh, Trixie Mattel in okay. the video. Uh, she definitely um, seemed very distracted at the rehearsal with the cute boys and whatnot. It, it, I would be too, don't yeah. get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, Trixie's hot as, and herself, so I'd be like, oh, I'll just stare at you and you can stare at that boy. Okay. Um, I'll be the Ben de la Creme in the corner, you know. There you um, go. I definitely thought Trixie stepped out of her box, though. Um, though hair was different. Uh, we usually see Trixie with blonde hair. Yeah. I think that's a staple. So like a purple rock star wig, I feel like 
maybe was a little much for her, but she nailed it. And then I've never seen her in a leotard before, a dance leotard, and she nailed that too. Totally. And she uh, shaded one of her sisters in the <laughs> lip sync. So, but it was like, it turned out funny and not shady. It was funny when she was talking about Shangela and coming out of a box and then she hopped on the box and spun it around and I was like, there it is. There I, it is. See, woman. I hadn't noticed that. You didn't notice that? Yeah. <laughs> Go back and look and you'll see her talk about that. I will. Yeah. It was great. Congrats. You did it. It is time to take off our last electric kettle off the pot and pour it into that hot tub that we had a couple weeks ago <laughs> and talk about the tea of this episode. The and tea. Arson, Nikki, there was so much there that I- There was so much tea. I think that like you would have thought that I was trying to attract men into my mouth because my mouth was like <laughs> the whole entire time. So I was like, and then Arson had to be like- Yeah, exactly. Close it up, so yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about your episode tea first, or do you want me to go first? I'll, I'll spill it for you, you right here, right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. When when, <laughs> when BB uh, suggested, uh, well, let me put it this way. When the girls were talking about uh, people coming back uh, and what that might mean, uh, when BB said... I think they probably will be dancers. And then... Shangela reacted with, <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so funny because <laughs> if you're on the last episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 3, it has to be a huge twist. It can't just be the backup dancers. And Shangela knew this and uh, BB unfortunately didn't, but that made for a comedy gold moment if you ask me. Ding! What about you, London? I want to know, because you're right, there was a lot of shade this episode. Um, uh, I... <laughs> Get, uh, keep going. Is BB again, because I don't know if she was just like... Uh, she... Mm. <laughs> Out with it. Still. It wasn't even like shade of like a queen shading another queen, but it was. So let me get there. So when BB... Uh, was dancing, and it's like when Trixie was talking about her face being here, she definitely nailed it. I didn't think that the producers were gonna like focus on her in the performance wise because she couldn't get the leg thing down, but we were waiting for it. And then they filmed her. So the shade was on the producers this time <laughs> because they filmed her and she looked like she was a magic carp Pokemon <sighs> out of Pokemon flopping around with a dancer and she couldn't get up there. Also, again, BB, I don't know if this is your episode to shade everybody else in the room, but when she was performing in the video and her moment was when she had the sewing thing and I was <laughs> like, girl, are you shading Aja who's actually in the video as well? And like, you didn't sew that. You didn't. Aja did it for you. That and had to be a reference to an earlier episode. Okay. There was no way. If it was, if it wasn't shade, it definitely was shade in my eyes. <laughs> so good job, Bibi Zahar. I don't know, poor Aja, but <laughs> Aja did look sickening this episode. So yeah, she should have been there. I thought she was gonna be a mole, and I thought she was gonna replace with Aja, and Aja was gonna have that moment, but Arson was wrong. <clears throat> what can I say? Shade. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, did you agree with Trixie winning or like? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing is that when All Stars happens with the eliminations, the way they are with the queens choosing each other to go home, you kind of have to resign yourself to the fact that it's not always going to be the best queen who wins every episode and who wins the finale. I thought all four of the people were very deserving and it just happened to be Trixie this time, personally. That's how I feel about it. But you might have other feelings, perhaps? I'm just bitter. And I was asking you about it earlier uh, when we were getting ready is like, do you think that Ben would have won having the jury pick? Or do you think that she wouldn't have won? Which brings me to like the example of Shangela. Like, I feel like she, if she was picked by the judges, she would have been in the top two over Kennedy. Okay. Uh, but I'm surprised that she wasn't. Like she slayed her best of drag as opposed to maybe not Kennedy, but that's just me. Yeah. But I feel like maybe she would have been up there, so I was a little gagged that she wasn't. Yeah, that's totally fair. Yeah, and she won a lot. She did send a lot of queens home, so yeah. 
Yeah, you know? it's one of those things that that's the way that the drag cookie crumbles, unfortunately. I love cookies. <laughs> I know you do. Aww. That's why I said that. <laughs> so congrats on Trixie, yeah, but being the finale winner. So we'll see what happens on episode, or sorry, season four of All Stars, but we'll have to get there. But we won't because this is our finale. Aww. Aww. <laughs> we will miss you. We will, but we won't miss you really wow. because we're gonna continue this. This is so exciting. Uh, tune back in right here on Jet Space Magazine in early April because we have a brand new series called Capital Heels that we will be debuting in which we will be featuring the Northwest finest drag performers for your viewing pleasure. But we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Thank you for watching Ruminations on Jet Space Magazine, everyone. Please, please do not forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. All of the above. All of the above. Do it. Beep, 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 beep. And like Arson said, please tune in in early April, so don't stop watching. Make sure you stay tuned for us, because we'll be back. My name is Lyndon Bradshaw. And my name is Arson Nikki. Under his eye, Wakanda forever. <laughs> See you soon, everyone. Bye. Take care. Uh